Dear structural engineers, welcome to the presentation of my latest book. I will try to do a presentation going through all the pages, page by page, but doing that uh, chapter by chapter. So I will start with chapter 1, which will be this, this video. Um, but first of all, of course, there will be a general presentation of the book. As I said, this is my latest book. You see the cover on the screen now. And it is a collection, a revisitation, a reorganization uh, of uh, the topics that was uh, treated in my first two books. The first one back in 2003 and the second one to 2006. Um, everything is rearranged, as I said. So part one now deals mainly with uh, linear calculations, even if uh, chapter 7, as we will see, will also explain some advanced techniques uh, to use to their maximum, to squeeze to their maximum uh, the finite element uh, linear codes. And the second one deals with uh, um, non-linear calculation. I kept uh, the introduction to part one, what's done by Rory Byrne, because at that time I was working for Ferrari, and Rory Byrne was the chief designer back into 2000. And part two, the introduction to part two, was written by uh, Luca Marmorini, second book. So he was the technical director, uh, engine technical director um, at Toyota Motorsport uh, when I wrote the second one. I was there as well. Um, the book is meant to be, uh, well, the intention is the same as the two, uh, first two, so trying to keep the theory uh, down to the minimum as possible and trying to highlight all the uh, practical aspects uh, so that uh, even if um, the, the, the reader has not a real um, engineer uh, culture, uh, can still use uh, a finite element code, uh, of course with uh, being being careful in what he's doing. And uh, this book is intended to be a sort of guidelines to try and, uh, as I said, uh, highlight practical aspects in the usage and uh, errors uh, that need to be avoided and so on. Um, this means, doesn't mean that um, the advanced user will not find uh, something useful. I hope that, especially in part two, uh, even the advanced user can find some different points of view on different aspects. Um, then let's go. So, um, chapter one is a general overview on how to uh, model structure with uh, finite elements. So. Uh, there are some examples concerning uh, um, plane strain elements, for example, this gear can be, because it's thin, can be modeled with uh, plane stress elements. And there is a comparison with a 3D model uh, to show that the results of the 2D model are good enough. Then we switch to the uh, similar 2D elements, but it's the plane strain where the thickness is so uh, high that uh, the strain state can be assumed as planar. And then, covering the last aspect of 2D elements, we switch to uh, axisymmetric uh, elements to reproduce structures which have an axial symmetry, of course. Um, here is presented also um, an example which will be uh, represented uh, later on in the book, at chapter 17. And um, yeah, also with rubber, so hyperelastic elements. And here there is an example of a threaded connection show that um, if, we neglect, if we neglect the angle of the thread, we can use uh, axisymmetric elements to model this kind of thing. And then we switch to 3D uh, elements, where the 3D elements can clearly be used or have to be used to model geometries with a complex shape as the ones we see here. Um, and then the last uh, most used type of element is the shell element, uh, which is used for in general parts which are built with uh, sheet, like these uh, bogies for uh, locomotive and trams, or like these 
body shell for uh, again uh, a tram or uh, switching to composite materials uh, also uh, structures like a monocoque uh, frame uh, can be modeled with the shell elements or wishbone elements or again bodywork for a motorsport uh, car uh, with covered wheels like the one we see here and then uh, also uh, some words uh, still in general and all these topics will be uh, recalled in the in the next chapters and uh, to, to have a deeper discussion on them but also uh, connections between parts are discussed so welded connection riveted connection bolted connections and then also some words are used for uh, monodimensional elements like beams uh, here we have a tubular frame for a, an electric vehicle and here, for example, two plates modeled with solid elements, the head of the bolt and the nut are modeled with solids, but the shank of the, of the screw is modeled with uh, beam elements. And then again, the attention is uh, drawn on the um, usage of MPCs, the most used are the rigid one and the soft one, to use the language Nastran, uh, the RB2 and the RB3, and the difference between the two is presented here in terms of displacement and stress. Uh, membrane elements is just uh, some some notes on that, and uh, yes, that's basically we came to page 51 and chapter one ends here. So I hope this will be useful for you, and I hope to see you also in the next uh, in the next uh, videos for the next uh, chapter show